Hi there, and thanks for coming back to the Woodwork Journey channel. So it's been just over a week since I've been able to be out here, what with the fibro that uh, really sort of took me out of the game and with the storms that we've had uh, around the country, it's been uh, it's quite been quite a challenge. We did have a, a tree that nearly came down, so that was a bit hairy, but Anyway, we're back in and looking at this. It's quite late in the day when I'm starting to record this, so whether I'm going to get this done all in one go, I don't know. What I'm planning on doing, though, is releasing uh, shorter videos, because I know my videos tend to be a bit on the long side. Um, so I'm going to attack each part individually. We'll just get straight into this one and we'll see about uh, popping this back together and uh, yeah hopefully I can remember how it goes because as I say it's been over a week and I can't quite remember <laughs> so it could go horribly wrong but let's crack on. Okay, so when we took this apart, I do remember that this cog right here was something that was, uh, it was throwing the chain off just a little bit, so it was coming slightly off centre, so it wasn't going uh, properly centrally all around, and was actually rubbing on the uh, the edges of this nylon wheel right here, which that can't be right. So what I'm going to do is, seeing as this screw holds this, is this a sprocket or a cog? whatever it is, it holds it in place. Um, I'm going to take this out and I'm going to put a washer behind it um, because this whole section that it's mounted to is uh, moves. So that shouldn't cause any problems, but hopefully it will space it out a little bit. It won't bend it round, but hopefully it'll space it out a little bit so it takes the pressure off of, uh, off of this and hitting this wheel right here. So fingers crossed that's going to work. So uh, let's get stuck into that. We've already run into an issue that I've just figured out after uh, going around everywhere to find a bunch of washers. Um, so the sprocket, spindle, cog, whatever it's called, goes onto the square piece, as I mentioned, and then the, uh, the screw then goes down through there to hold it in place. That means to move this out, um, we would need to put something behind this square piece, which I don't have because I don't know. I might be able to create some kind of washer or something that does that, but then this section won't have the purchase on the end of there that it will need to uh, to do what to stay where it needs to stay and therefore making things a little bit dangerous. So the only sort of fix that I can think of at this point would be to try and space or shim this actual roller somehow um, from the back end. But for that, I've got no idea uh, if that's possible. So let's leave it on that one for the time being. We're going to have to deal with that as it is. Can't change it. Sorry for wasting your time, but at least we learned something about this little machine. So I'm going to pop these back together. Right then, so the next thing we've got to worry about is, uh, is this. Now, I think this lever here, that is connected to this wheel. So as this wheel moves up, so does the lever. Now then, on the back of here, which I'll bring the camera in and show you in a moment, there's a block, and I think this fits into that block. Let me show you what I mean. I've had a look at this, this picture right here, and that tells me that because in that picture you can't see this little gadget gizmo going on here, and if it's not there and it's not there, then one must imagine that it's around the side there. So does this fit up there? Oh. Yeah, so that fits around there like so, and the uh, that little eyelet is not attached to anything. And I don't know why it's there, but that to me looks like the picture before I took it to bits. Right, what we're going to go for is I'm going to pop it on this bottom one first, which is a little bit loose, but uh, we're going to stick it on there first. Then we're going to pop it on this one on the right. So I've taken the uh, split link off again because it needs to be separate. I have wedged in a, uh, a, a set of pliers underneath here, and that just means that this it's kept this um, sprocket up enough to be able to get the the chain all around everything. So that's that's the plan at least. So uh, let's how we get see how we get on. And 
actually doing that process I've managed to do something where I've got a bunch more space behind here let me show you so things have moved to the point where we've got a decent amount of space behind this uh, behind this chain now or in between the chain and this nylon wheel so I'm not really sure how that's been achieved but I mean it has <laughs> so uh, that's got to be a good thing right So this could be a bit of a problem. I don't really understand what's happening here, but the chain isn't always going straight onto the sprocket cog thing. Um, so it kind of makes it click. You see that? The one thing that I have noticed is I mentioned when I took this apart that it seemed that this was putting some wear onto this right here. And I think it really is because that look, that chain is definitely hitting on top of that on occasions which that can't be a good thing like there it's proper on there there's no there's no movement for it that is proper on there huh what we are learning is that underneath this section here is where the motor is so the motor is through there and that comes out to this right here that then has the belt that comes up and drives the cutters so that's how they start spinning and then there is another belt that goes on here that goes onto the wheel that I've got to put there which will mean that um, as this with the cutters start spinning this will spin moving this wheel which will then move the rollers in turn so that's that's how the machine works I mean it's a pretty simple uh, idea really I mean it's not you know it's not groundbreaking in as much as how it works it's just the motor drives the the cutter the cutter spindle then drives the rollers and that's that's it it's as simple as that as far as I can as far as I can make out let's see about putting this back together to see if uh, anything can be achieved I'm starting to lose faith in being able to make this a better thickness planer to be honest with you but uh, we'll see how we get on you can hear how things just aren't sitting where they should be right this is possibly a very ill-advised idea but what I'm going to do is I am some distance away and I've got a big old broom handle here I'm going to turn it on and we're going to see if this all spins and works I'm also wearing PPE back here but uh, but yeah let's just have a look We are now unplugged once again so we can carry on working on this little puppy but we, at least we haven't broken it. To make that work by the way I did have to bypass the safety switch so that's just something to be aware of. Okay so I was wrong about where this little tiny diddly spring goes. I've just realised after looking at this picture right here that um, once you put these bolts in here which hold the, the, uh, the top table on then the safety switch goes in like so it then pivots on uh, onto a screw that goes through there then as you put the dust collector underneath when you're doing the jointing then that moves up there and clicks the uh, clicks the safety switch and when you move the air from the top to the bottom um, or sorry from the bottom to the top so you can do your thicknessing then that pushes that down there and it clicks that switch once again so that's how the safety switch works at the very least and this this little spring is just there to it goes off this hole and then it comes wraps underneath and round to there and it just makes sure that it has got contact the whole time so at least i figured that one out so that's that's nice so something that I have noticed, this is the safety switch and again this is not plugged in but I'm just taking the wires off to have a look and because this one is actually facing up when you do take it off um, that had a bunch of sawdust and nonsense and it still has got a fair whack I don't know if I'm able to get this on camera but uh, yeah it's still got a fair amount in there and um, yeah, so if this were to just stop working, one might imagine that maybe sap or something could get into that connection and uh, and stop the machine working. But uh, but yeah, 
I just thought that was interesting. Thought I'd share. Carry on. So what I have just realised is I was wrong about um, how this is situated because see those little sort of shoulders? You've only got shoulders on two sides, on this side and this side. And so because of that, um, and uh, I went to have a look at the photo again and it looks as though one shoulder is on the outside, which makes sense because it's managed to break free because it can, when, without the shoulders being um, part of it, you can actually slide it in and out of that section right there, which is clearly not what you want to do. So um, yeah, so these shoulders will have to be behind the moving bar, which means I've got to take the, the chain off again, put this back there and then uh, fanny about like that but uh, there we go at least I, I think that this the, the the hole the tab with the hole on it um, is uh, is going to be I don't know it's either got a face up or down I can't see it up in the previous photo so down it is but it doesn't do anything don't know why is it there unless it's just one of the ones that they used from over here that they use as a spacer ah uh, That'll make sense. That'll make sense. So what I figured out here is that um, where you've got this bar going across here, there's a little show of wear, just a, a little kind of highlight of it right there, which seems to be the same sort of size as the tab. So I'm confident now that this tab goes down and not up or to the side or anywhere else. One thing that I am going to do, rather than putting oil on this chain, I am going to be using some of this PTFE uh, dry anti-friction lubricant. So this hopefully will be better than oil because um, it shouldn't attract uh, sawdust and what have you. So hopefully this will be better in the grand scheme of things. So uh, we'll give it a go. What I am going to do is just check everything is working and at least we've learned a little bit more about the insides of this machine. Gotta say, it does sound like it's running a bit smoother. <laughs> 